Good evening. Cold evening, everybody. Sitting here getting warm by the trash can fire. Swapped out barrels. That one, I can take my finger and poke through the sides of it. It has served us now for five years. So we got a, a new one. Put it up on the blocks outside here. Well, they was up there. They came got their water and left, which I don't blame them. But hope everybody's doing all right. Uh, snow apocalypse came and went. Uh, no snow. <laughs> kind of figured. We got a bunch of ice, sleet. <coughs> About 20 miles that way. They got the snow on the other side of the mountain. We're kind of. So if you see off in the. That's the ridge lookout mountain going all the way over here and you got pigeon back here i mean rolling hills pigeon is but look out it's pretty good size but it kind of cocoons us in here we're on the plateau well we're not in the valley it's kind of like the plateau of the valley we're on the back side of lookout anyway kind of creates a uh, a cradle and uh a lot of the blowing snow and we'll go straight over us and hit the mountaintop Makes any sense but didn't escape the just to your bone <laughs> butt cold uh got down to um i think about five degrees is what i seen at 2 30 this morning of course i got up in, in two hour intervals uh to check on the fire because instead of choking it down uh to a just a rolling ember coal. I let it let it run all night, baby. <laughs> so I was up every two hours stoking it. And uh house stayed. I think it got down to 67. Um but I had uh that was early in the morning daybreak and I had slept past my two hour marker and fire was far from going out, but it, it wasn't just cherry red, um hotter than Satan. So, but anyway, 67 degrees in the house, five degrees outside. I'll take that. There, there were plenty of people I seen on uh, online today, and uh, I'm a bless their hearts. They, they're running the, the heat pump, and um, uh, central heating and air, and, and those are good. Those are good down to freezing. Those are even good. They were semi-efficient and, and 20 degree, but you get down to the teens, that's when they start uh, start losing their efficiency and just can't keep up with the house. And then, but of course, we got down single digits and the wind chill was minus and uh, <coughs> barely warmed up past freezing. So a bunch of these people's online woke up to 45 degree houses, 50 degree houses because their heat pumps just no bueno. Single, single digit and minus wind chills, they just not going to do it. And I feel real bad for them. Um, cause that's cold in the house. Wake up at 45 degrees. Um, but, um, no! <laughs> <laughs> yes! My boys come out and oh! they tossed a uh, shot. Hey, come here and show them what you. <laughs> it went, Boom. Yep, put a two liter bottle in there on a fresh fire. <laughs> yeah, you tie that up and it goes, shoo! Yep, science experiment. Anyway, yes. it tossed it in the fire and you heard it in the background had to. <laughs> Went up about 20 feet. Anyway, my sounds feel real bad for those people with the heat pumps. And uh, I'm going to feel even worse for them when they get their heat bill in next month. Whew. A lot of these people have four or $500 electric bills. And uh, I used to be there when we first got married. Um, but, uh, change to the simple way of life and uh telling you folks um, to each their own you live your life how you want to live it but uh today's times live simple lower your expectations and um as my dad always said um don't don't try to live the champagne life with a with a, a beer wallet so to speak so i don't know i'm just saying ever since we got away from corporate america and uh doing our own thing and 
um, deciding what, what deciding what you need in life to make you happy. Uh, come to find out, all the stuff we thought was making us happy in life was just stressing us out. Uh, great salary, all the toys in the world, and we was just stressed. And uh, living paycheck to paycheck like people do. Cut all that out and uh, lo and behold, it was the stuff that we thought we needed that was holding us back from really enjoying life. So anyway, I get off my soapbox about that, but y'all just take an inner look in, in, in yourself, especially with the new year. Just sit down with your other half and decide what's really important in life. Is that bass boat or is that four wheeler or is that side $20,000 side by side really worth Am I getting the enjoyment out of it, or um, is it stressing me out because i got to make the payments and it sits in the garage six months out of the year? Um, I don't know. You'll be surprised what you cut loose of and really start enjoying life. But on to the next thing. Um, we didn't have a problem. Like I said, we sat at 67 to 70 degrees in the house. Um, love wood heat. Um, it's unlike anything else. Can't get it from my central unit heat pump. Gas comes close, but that's liquid gold. Um, wood heat. It just, it's like a warm buffalo blanket. Just hugs you all over. <laughs> Hard to explain, but it just surrounds you. It's a dry heat, so if you venture off and solely want to heat with wood, and invest in you a good humidifier for the other end of the house and uh, get you a good uh, uh, kettle pot to put on the stove because uh, it will suck the moisture right out of your house. It'll put you down into the below 20% and that's no bueno. Uh, head colds, um, stuffy noses, all that. So you wanna have, we keep my house, I try to keep it around 45, 50% in the winter. And, uh, but uh, yeah, we didn't have a problem. Um, even if it got down to negative digits, I mean, just crank that stove up. I'm going to put a central, uh, I'm going to put a, um, not a wood broiler, uh, wood boiler furnace, but I'm going to put just a wood furnace in. And, uh, uh, difference is it, does, it doesn't, uh, need a water heat exchanger to put in and blow through the hot water that exchanges through the, the two or three or 400 gallon, whatever size of wood boiler you get. Um, it's efficient, but, uh, that, that really... It's overkill for the south. We're below the Mason-Dixon line, and um, the northern folk, yeah, that, that works out good. Um, and you can relocate it further from the house um, if need be, and uh, put it in the central part of your property and heat your house and your 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 greenhouse and workshop. But uh, we're not looking to do that. I just want to heat my house, so a wood furnace. Same design, except it blows it straight in. It's got big blowers. They're hooked to a uh, thermostat control, and it uh, blows it straight up into your uh, into your um, uh, uh, exchange unit up top. So you bypass all the central unit, and you hook it straight into your your ductwork, which I'm gonna run ductwork this spring, and decide where we where and how many vents we need to put in each room, and um, it'll be. It'll be outside, right, right there. There's like a like a 10 foot by 10 foot pad, 12 foot by 12 foot. Uh, I'm gonna pour concrete pad, put a lean to over. You can access it from the back here when we get the steps out or the side, and it'll sit right underneath there, covered. And I'm gonna spray the foam, then insulate the walls, and that's where it'll store the furnace and we'll store our wood too. We we'll stored good amount, and then once we get low there, we'll the wood check that I'm building back here. Gonna we'll store a couple of cords of wood. But anyway, um, it works just like central system. I'll get a uh, a Honeywell or whatever brand, probably the cheapest um, control unit, just like you'd have in the center part of your house for your central. You set the thermostat on 68 or 70, and it plugs directly into that, that wood furnace, and it hits this mark, and then it shuts the furnace off. And it has a little motorized thing that shuts the dampener and closes it off. And then uh, it'll call for it to, for more heat when it gets below your threshold you set. And it'll open that dampener back up, fire will start roaring, and the fans will kick on. has two 600 or 800 CFM blowers. but uh, And it just blows it all through your ductwork in the house. So 
that's what we're gonna do we're gonna have the buck stove insert in next uh next fall um we'll have that as supplemental heat but i highly doubt we'll it'll have to get pretty stinking cold and stay cold for a long time which usually doesn't down here but uh we'll use it for i just have a nostalgic fire in the fireplace in the living room and this this stove i got back here in the back um we'll go back outside once again it saved our butt for the second winter since we've been here and it'll go in my shop but that furnace will it i think it's i'm getting the smallest one you can get they're designed for shops and big warehouses i mean it's 3500 square foot i think is what what this one does so it's going to run us out it's super efficient it's got a, a catalyst system in it too so it'll it'll burn your ashes pretty much nothing it burns everything with that catalyst system in there uh it's gonna be nice um and you'll get even heat through the whole house so anyway rambling on about the plans for the spring and of course finishing up the the back portion here and, and knocking out the rest of our wall uh in our bedroom and, and finishing up the floor and that that'll get the whole outer perimeter of the house sealed up where we're not leaking any cold air in uh, we was leaking cold air in the boys room because the windows the plastic got scratched up by the cats and uh i'll fix that we was pouring in cold air right there but anyway we get that wrapped up because this time next year we'll be setting good we'll have a good heat system with that that, that uh, wood furnace and we'll have a secondary in the living room and uh when times got real hard we can put a gas unit in the boys in our bedroom but i highly doubt we'll ever need that but we have it if we do so anyway you want to make a trip with me we'll go back here and check on the horses real quick i put a roll of hay fresh hay out for them um right before the snow <laughs> um just so um, they'd have a fresh one. They still had a bunch left on the ground from the other one. They had just, I got two horses, Specs and Spook, who like to move my 1200 pound bale and roll it around like a ball. <laughs> so, um, that's what they did with the first one. So, they were still a lot of it on the ground, but I wanted a fresh one out here. Because, as y'all horse people know, that is how they, they're not like reptiles. I'm about to sit y'all down for a second. I can never do that. Make sure I get back. Anyway, that's how they uh, regulate the heat in their body. Their body processes that, uh, that hay, generates heat, and that's how they stay warm. Um, so good hay and uh, a good uh, supplemental grain for these super cold nights and your horse will be just fine we're going to invest in some blankets but ours are used to being out they get a thick winter coat and um there one of them right there big boy a big man but uh these people oh you got your horse out in the pasture and it's snowing and well they do have a running shed and they do have thick evergreens they can get under but if you're feeding them right you can go out there and see the steam coming off their back in the middle of a snow shower so i mean same with my pyrenees dogs they have shelter to get in but they this is <laughs> they'd much rather be out in this it's the weather of their people all right mr macho this one's just visiting for a while my wife's training him for a little buggy he's ornery as i'll get out Miss Coco, see, you can see there, mine get a thick, thick winter coat in. Oh, yep, see, I put that hay out a day and a half ago, and they have just pushed it around, pushed it down the hill here, and unraveled it. There's, there's another week of eating right there, but... And they'll pick through this stuff. Um, they just... All mine like to pick and get the sweet in the center. And I think that's why they push it around. 
here's our young buddy he need to get a little bit more weight on this is our stud but he's just a baby he doesn't turn three till may there's pepper and stormy miss brownie who stands underneath the brambles and here is miss specs how you doing huh how you doing girl specs is the one i picked up from a friend of ours that we do horse lessons with his daughter but uh this is dad's horse she is a house and yeah right underneath there where my hand is is just radiating heat yeah um yeah that's how indians are warming their hands right underneath there like a toaster and if you lay your hand on the back yeah you get underneath the fire right there if it was angled right you could see steam it's hot but well I'll come back here check on y'all it's the gang y'all pick through that miss brownie i'm really happy with miss brownie what you doing my wife can go up and love all over on her she's still a little skeptical of me but every once in a while she'll let me grab an ear but uh she's either turning the year old or fixing to turn a year old that's my wife but that's our dexter uh heifer you're gonna give us babies to put in freezer camp yep my wife come out here and braided all the tails up pepper good grief looks like you swallowed a beach ball son oh show me your good side stormy oh <laughs> this boot decided to come play he is our tallest horse by 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 leaps and bounds he needs a pretty good amount of weight put on him but we're getting there specs is no small horse she's right under 16 she's a little taller than but the, the moose up there is probably close to 17 hands ginger stop now that's why he's running around and uh, at night he's black as ace of spades you can't see him till he moves and you see his hawks down there or why he blends in with the with the night very well yeah i'm talking about you but we'll get a couple hundred pounds put on him <laughs> been giving him supplements here's a baby he just turned two mr trust he's my boy's horse Anywho, well, night check is officially done. I got plenty. I'm hoping all this right here, it was chert like that is over there. And uh, well, I'll show you. I'm going to come back here in the spring when it starts warming up a little bit. And we're going to put probably half a ton of seed out, I'd venture to say. But, uh, yeah just charity rock so i'm spreading them all out up here i'm gonna come in with a forestry mulcher i'm gonna clear all what i can clear out and what i can use to put in the woodshed and after that we're gonna mulch it all up mulch the stumps let it lay and spread some more seed out can't tell it but this is a pretty steep grade well if we stand sideways an angle <laughs> yeah but getting there you ready bud hey i can kind of step on the siding of it before it breaks little frog pond which was supposed to have been done last year dug out more but just couldn't connect with a friend of ours with a uh excavator but this year it's got to happen swimming pool y'all remember got uh xed out and hauling it off this is going to be the uh, round pen arena for my wife to do lessons burning some of that and then scooping it up and humping, dumping it in a big uh uh, uh whatever you call it <laughs> dumpster big 40 50 yard dumpster 
you fall through and you have shoes. That's it. I say that'd be pretty much frozen solid by morning. I'll come out here and do some skating. <laughs> anyway, it's getting dark. It's getting cold. Mom's heating up leftover chicken. We're gonna have Caesar chicken salad. So that's not frozen. Is it not? Oh, they can get in there. Good. Anyway, y'all stay warm. And as soon as it warms up some, we'll start some projects. But why are you following us? And Lieutenant Dan following us. <laughs> anyway, y'all have a good one. <laughs>